Hey everyone, and Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year's from everyone here at Crash Star Gaming. Yeah, I kind of hinted that there might be a third game in the works that I'll be doing an LP for, and well, this is it. Final Fantasy VII, Dirge of Cerberus. Yeah, I kind of, you know, FF7's been getting a lot of attention lately, what with Cloud being in Smash Bros, the, re the recent release of, uh, announcement of the FF7 remake, uh... You know, a bunch of cool stuff about Final Fantasy VII. You know. So I figured I'd try, uh... I'd tackle it part of the FF7 compilation. There's this, the Advent Children movie, and then there's also uh, Crisis Core. Now, this has been regarded kind of middle-of-the-road, kind of negative reviews, but... I've heard, like... I saw... I first got in it. Uh, let me rephrase this. I first got ex exposure to this game through, like, the X-Play review, where they kind of compared it to, uh, Devil May Cry, with Vincent being like Dante. Uh, let's turn on the subtitle, and that'll be it. I think this is fine. But I'm gonna go ahead and see if this game is really all that as bad as some people say. I played a little bit before, and it didn't seem too, too terrible. But, you know. This is the story of Vincent Valentine, another man in red. Not necessarily Santa, but... He does bring gifts in the form of bullets to people's faces. And who doesn't like Vincent? He's one of the coolest characters from Final Fantasy VII, and he was an optional party member. So that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Proper ninja attire. Wow, really getting up in there, aren't you? <laughs> Focus on the ass of the 14-year-old girl, Square. Really nice. Anyway. So yeah, this is Dirge of Cerberus. Where Vincent is our main character. And it's also kind of a shooting game. I think the whole point of this game is, they were like, you know, FF7's pretty damn popular. Why don't we make a spin-off of that? But we can't, like, compromise Cloud because he's so cool. Hmm. Well, we need somebody who's cool who can draw in an audience. But not necessarily... But in case of bombs... 
they won't like think negatively of Cloud or any of the other characters. Let's see. How about Vincent? He was an optional character and he's super cool looking. Perfect. Good. Throw him in there. If this doesn't work, fuck it. We'll just we already have his costume for Kingdom Hearts for Cloud, so we're good. We pretty much used Vincent up for what we needed him for. Out of the rest of the compilation, I think this is the one that's looked upon the least favorably. Oh, right, and I also forgot to mention there was the FF7 uh, port on the PS4, and I've been playing that a lot recently. I would actually recommend going and watch the Yo! Video Games uh, playthrough of it. Max seems to be pretty intent and devoted to FF7. I believe that's Hojo, you guys. I don't know, I don't care what anybody says, Vincent's gun looks pretty freaking sick. Regardless of if this game's crappy or not, that gun looks pretty sick. I don't know how it works, but it makes a lot more sense than the gun blade. Let's shit talk all the other Final Fantasy games besides this one. At least it's not as bad as FF13. You're not stuck in a hallway. There. That's already a point in this game's favor. So yeah, while well, last year I did the Knights playthrough, because that seemed more Christmas oriented, and I am doing the Rodea playthrough, I figured I'd throw in another one, just as another little Christmas bonus. Three years later, away from that scene that had nothing to do with anything. Now I'll firmly admit, uh, I'm not too, I'm not, like, masterful on the lore of Final Fantasy 7. I know quite a bit of it. I know enough of it. I know that Vincent was a Turk who got experimented on by Hojo and he has this obsession with uh, this woman named Lucrezia who is Hojo's wife and the mom of Sephiroth. But besides that, the only other bit of this thing that I know was from the, uh, from the commercials where they had Gact doing the theme song. So that's already a... Uh, you know, people may give this game crap, but it's better than Shadow the Hedgehog. In fact, even the J-pop star that they have in this one is far more popular than M-Flo. I love Astro Sexy, but, you know, they're no Gact. Remember when Gact became a Final Fantasy character? Who was introduced in, uh, dirt in, uh, Crisis Core? Now, I don't know much about Lucrezia, except, you know, she's the she was, like, Hojo's lover, I guess, and Sephiroth's mom. But really... It, <laughs> I think Vincent should probably have a bit of higher standards. I'm not questioning Lucrezia here, it's just, you know... Really? Hojo? The most morally bankrupt person in the series, and probably the other antagonist besides Sephiroth in FF7? Just saying. Again, I don't know the whole story behind it, but still. At least the cutscenes look really nice. Oh, if I haven't already mentioned this before, the whole cast from uh, the Advent Children movie are reprising their roles in this game. So we got Steve Bloom as Vincent Valentine. Also, another thing this game has over Shadow the Hedgehog is that Vincent's a lot cooler than Shadow. And has a good reason for using the gun. But really, any game could really be beat Shadow the Hedgehog. There's always gotta be one dancing scene in a Final Fantasy game somewhere. Vincent just closes the window. I hate parties. It sucks. Oh. That ruined your party pretty damn quick. Stop having fun. There is no fun to be allowed. No fun. Send in the fun police. Exterminate all the party goers. Oh, Jesus. All right, we're starting off quick. Starting off real quick. Starting off rough. Oh my goodness. Jesus. Vincent's like, you know, different day, same old shit. 
Fight off. The Cerberus looks freaking rad. Seriously, it's a three-barreled, like, handgun. Oh no, a little girl with her Moogle. I'm kind of disappointed that Vincent never made an appearance in Kingdom Hearts, because I just love the dichotomy that uh, of Vincent being in a really light-hearted, for the most part, game. But no, they had to recycle his outfit for Cloud in FF1, which they never carried over to FF2. Anyway, I think we're starting on the gameplay. Fair warning, this game does prompt you to save a lot, and it also prompts a lot of cutscene and loadings. The Sea of Flames. Uh, I, oh, yeah, big difference in graphical fidelity What's going on? from in-game cutscenes to the CG ones. Although it doesn't look terrible. It looks a lot better than Shadow. Even in a game that has nothing to do- that's not Sega related or has nothing to do with Sonic, I find a way to shit on Sonic. Merry Christmas, everybody. Except you, Sonic. <laughs> uh... Oh, also, by the way, uh, a lot of these characters, a lot of the character designs, besides Vincent and the original cast, do not look that great. So, okay, this is not really... I'm not really sure why X-Play made the comparison to... It's explained how items work right now. Potions are your basic healing items. I'm not really sure why X-Play compared this to uh, Devil May Cry, considering already there's a heavier focus on gunplay. And reloading your ammo, which Devil May Cry never did. You can do hand-to-hand -hand combat with the circle button, but mostly you're either firing with the R1 button or reloading with the R2 button. And then, of course, it's going to introduce materia and magic and... You're trying to get uh, get up chains and stuff, collecting gil to buy new uh, upgrades. I think I've also heard a comparison to this with uh, Resident Evil 4, because it does sort of have tank controls. See, look at this. Look how much options, look how many paths I can take. Already better than FF13, am I right, you guys? <laughs> Let's see. Oh, that's the pause button. Alright, so here you can customize your guns. You can see your status, your levels, your strength, defense, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the items you have. Yeah, the Cerberus. Designed for neutralizing close and medium range targets. Eventually you can customize your gun to have different barrels or to have, like, materia attached to it. Which we're going to get into pretty shortly. Although the tank controls are not entirely great. But so far it's not too bad. I mean, yeah, it's a little... It looks a little wonky. It looks a little, uh, unpolished, but not terrible. And they have good voice actors. Now where am I supposed to meet but you? it's the characters, it's the unique characters to this game that are going to kind of make you laugh. We haven't seen any of them yet, except maybe the intro cutscene, but they're coming. I don't know why Vincent only has one golden gauntlet. I guess that's just for combat and doesn't really work with shooting his gun. But the golden boots I don't get. See? Vincent has to save civilians. That makes him a good guy. Already a much more moral person than Shadow. Even though Shadow wasn't a person. Shoot the robot dogs! Fuck you, Shinra! It's not Shinra. I don't think it's Shinra. Okay. I played this stage a little while ago, like, the other day, to kind of test to see if I would be good enough to do a recording on this. Okay, so, what I'm going to be doing for uh, this playthrough, it's not going to be a 100% run. It, although it might be, who knows, with my track record. Um, but, supposedly there is, like, a secret ending, and I'm going to try getting that. And there are, uh, there is a secret weapon that takes, like, a lot of grinding to work up to. That's kind of a, that's a bit of a spoiler, uh, but I do have means of reducing the amount of grinding that I need to do. So, because unlike Shadow, 
which was just a one-off, and I don't know why I didn't do this before, because I didn't have it, but I have an action replay. I'm not going to use it. I'm not going to use it until there is a necessity to grind. Uh, unless I am, like, at the end of the game, and I do not have all the materials, or I don't have all the enough gill to upgrade my weapon, then I'm going to uh, crack out the old action replay in order to be able to show you guys all that cool stuff. So we have Mako Point. This restores our Materia. And now we have a Fire Materia. So, if you'll notice, if you go to Customize and you go right, no, right here, you can equip a Fire Materia. This basically makes like a grenade shot for Vincent. And I believe there's also Thunder and there is also Ice Materia that you can equip to Vincent's various guns. Because I was looking on the Final Fantasy Wiki for like stats and stuff of all the characters and Vincent is... Pretty, it's not really made for combat. Like, his gun is good for range, but he's mostly a really good spellcaster. But Vincent does have a few of his old, uh... Does have a few moves from the original game. Like, he can transform. We'll show that off whenever I get that ability. It's kind of like a Devil Trigger. I guess that's where the comparison for that X-Play drew between this and Devil May Cry. So far, I'm not really seeing the whole bad part. I mean, it seems... It seems serviceable. I mean, it's not, like, act as action-packed as, say... As Devil May Cry. But then again, I wasn't really expecting that. I mean, I was expecting a, uh, basic shooter game. You know. Honestly, I was kind of expecting this game to be dog shit whenever I first bought it. I was like, oh yeah, Dirge of Cerberus. That's a game that nobody likes. That's a terrible Final Fantasy game. And I don't think it's, like, a Final Fantasy game. This is a spin-off. Like, arguably Crisis, yeah, Crisis Core is a lot better. Like I can already tell from a the graphics, and that was a PSP game, by the way. Well, can save them. Uh, Crisis Core was a lot better in the sense that it had a uh, had a very emotional protagonist who had a lot of you could draw a lot of sympathy for. Not that Vincent is a not that Vincent is a bad protagonist. It's just. Oh, cool, we have the limit break. Activate Vincent's limit break and transform to get. Or return to his normal. And the R1 and the control pad. And the okay. So Vincent can go into the Galleon Beast, which is his limit break from the original game. We're not going to use it just yet. Whenever the game gets a bit harder and it has a few more enemies for me to go ahead and tackle, then I'll use it. I'm going to save it. It's like the Devil Trigger. You don't want to crack it off immediately whenever you get it. You want to save it for the harder enemies. Like I was saying, yeah, Crisis Core played more like a traditional Final Fantasy, like FF7 with its ATB game, with ATB gauge. But uh, this, this just focuses more on Vincent's gunplay, and it's kind of like a character action game. In a way, in a way, not... Oh, Jesus! She is holding off that dog pretty well. All right, it's time for Vincent to be a big, huge, cool guy. Oh, shit. Which way do I go? I think it's this way. Uh, no, this way. This way. Okay. I got tripped up last time and I, whenever I was playing this on during my downtime to kind of get ready for the recording. And I missed it. Oh, shit, I did it again. Well, that woman's probably having her face ripped off by a robot dog. But I'm sure she's fine. Vincent doesn't care. Vincent is coming to save the day. Hang on, I'm coming. Oh. Well. Fuck off, robot dog. Save the abducted girl. Alright, cool. I'll just push this button and I'm gonna save the girl from the- Ow! So I think we have to survive until the time limit's up. Yeah, see? Uh, fire material works like a grenade launcher, so pretty cool. So, so far I'm kind of liking the combat. Probably have to save... I mean, the movement is kind of weird, like with tank controls and stuff, but, uh, oh, okay. Got him. <laughs> the movement is kind of weird with its tank controls, but it's not, it's not terrible. Like, it's not RE2 level. <laughs> Gotta do the cape flourish. Kids love the cape flourish. Makes them think I'm cool. 
Honestly, I don't think I could have picked a better voice actor for Vincent than uh, Steve Bloom. Or Steve Blum. Bloom. Phoenix Downs basically revive you, uh, a la the original way they did it. But only if you, like, uh, die. In game, they'll just do it automatically. You don't. Uh, you don't use them in order to revive, you just. They happen automatically. There you go. Got my point across. We haven't run into anything yet, but I think there's going to be a barrel upgrade for our Cerberus pretty soon. And I think they come in a variety of uh, lengths, like short and long. Like long is more for damage and range, and short is for more speed and but is for more speed and uh, for more controlled bursts. So we don't know who these people are, but they're not the Shinra Electric Company. They're not the dick bags handled by Rufus. And I forget where this is in, like, conjunction with the rest of the compilation. Like, bef like Crisis Core came before FF7. That was the story of Zack. He's always got to do the cape flourish. <laughs> Vincent Valentine is here to save Christmas. Sniper scope. Okay. So this now lets us do the zoom-in function with our gun. I never, I never get used to the whole uh, press triangle for your abilities. So pressing the R2 button in, the R3 button in, you can get a good zoom in for long-range targets. Okay, here we go. Hey, stop it, you dicks! Ah. Those guys are dicks. So they're not the Shinra Electric Company, I can pretty much guarantee that, but... I say pretty much guarantee, I don't really know that much about this game. But I think they're just random randos from uh, this game. Let's see, Advent Children happened after FF7. But... My whole question is, where does this fall in line with Advent Children? Although, does anybody really care about the story in Advent Children? That was the whole thing. Like, when I was a kid... I never actually played the original FF7. I have corrected that since then. I played it a few times, more than a few times, and I've beaten it. It's a really fun game. It still it holds up pretty well, in my opinion. I don't know what everybody else thinks, but I think it holds up pretty well. Graphics, mm, but you know, uh, and the story is pretty good. Really, if <laughs> I'm saying this, apparently it wasn't good enough to beat Undertale in Game Facts. <sighs> but you know, get dunked on. Uh, yeah, when I, I never played FF7 when I was a kid, and that, kind, and that was kind of a regret of mine, but whenever the movie came out, I was like, oh man, this is going to be so cool. At first, I thought, stupidly, I thought it was like a video game. I was like, oh, I want to play a really high definition, I want to play as Cloud, because I saw him in Kingdom Hearts, and he was super cool, and the Buster Sword is really cool, because he has a big sword, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> Like I said, when I was a kid, I was very easily impressed if a character used, like, a big-ass frickin' Zweihander or whatever. That's how you impress little baby Crash Star. He loved the big swords. Alright, cool, now we have a long barrel. Long barrel increases our weapon's power as well as its range. So, if we go here to customize... Go here... Oh! Uh, barrels. This is your average, it's just... It's basic. So we lose speed and we lose our and we go down weight. So I think that makes it harder to hold or it's more powerful recoil, I guess. But that's fine. It also makes it look really ridiculous that you have have a sight on a revolver and it's just this big fuck off gun that Vincent's just one handing. Although I don't think it carries over in cutscenes. All right, so this is our first boss. We had to fight a helicopter. We haven't had to use the Galleon Beast yet, but we'll we'll use them eventually. Eventually, when there's a large tar number of enemies, and I'm pretty sure we're getting to that point. So the first boss is a helicopter, the Dragonfly. That's a pretty cool name for your flying vehicle. And already it is just being taken down by a handgun. Granted, it's an upgraded handgun with three barrels, but it's like a modified handgun, but still. You gotta 
that's got to be kind of a morale killer if your super advanced helicopter can be taken down by an asshole wearing a red cape just shooting uh, a freaking handgun at you. That's got to be a bit of a drop in morale. I want this thing to transform into a giant robot, but I know it's not going to. Alright, so they have a few uh, chuckle fucks for us to fight. So let's go ahead and use the Galleon Beast. Let's see what this look, what uh, it looks like in the good old high definition PS2 graphics. All right, it's time to do Devil Trigger. Oh, oh I just wasted my potions. Limit Breaker. Oh, wait. There we go. Okay, it's taking a while. It's a little slower than Devil Trigger. There we go. Kept you waiting, huh? Oh shit, but Vincent can just throw fireballs. I thought this was just a melee thing. Oh, but you can do melee. Cool. It looks pretty cool. The Galleon Beast does look pretty cool. Uh, there is no... I think this is the only limit break that Vincent can do in this game. So there is no, like, Jason Voorhees type uh, mask for him to wear. There is no, like... I forget what his other limit breaks were. It was this and Chaos. I think Chaos does play a part in this game, though. That might be a bit of a spoiler, but... It's Vincent's last limit break. There's an achievement in... There's a trophy in the PS4 port of it. Oh no, but I didn't use Galleon Beast. I just shot him in the face. So I never really... Well... I never really sure what Vincent was... Like, I know he's a modified super superhuman, but I always kind of thought he was a vampire when I was when I first saw him. Because he comes out of a coffin, and then you see him with a wine glass full of, like, a red liquid. Is it blood? Who knows? Who knows? So here are some of our original characters. This weird... This weird anime girl with the stupid helmet. And the orange eyes. Oh, now they're blue eyes. Is this the one? Oh shit, is that Vulcan Raven? I say is that Vulcan Raven because if you saw in the intro cuts and he had a big frick off, uh... We saw him. He's the weird wolf looking guy. Okay, so I think I see a reason why I probably shouldn't use Limit Breaker as much. Considering it takes quite a while. So here's the thing. Jukeboxes. These are your, uh, these are your stores. Okay. So we can buy more handgun ammo. Let's do that. We got some gill. You got some gill. So far, we have not leveled up once. And the reason that is, your char Vincent levels up at the result screen. And, it's, and uh, you're being graded on how you do. Like, how many civilians you saved, how long it took you, how many targets you shot, how accurate you were with your shots... A lot of this stuff. Kind of Devil May Cry stuff. Alright, so this is the short barrel. It's for faster and more controlled shots, and it's easier to hold. I don't really care for it. I want strong shots, not weak shots. We were looking for Reeve, and if... For those of you who are familiar with Final Fantasy, that was the Shinra Electric Company uh, employee... I forget what his position was. Who controlled uh, the robotic... The robotic uh, Kate Sith. And he should be showing up. Okay. Look how tiny she is. Tell us where it is. I don't know what you're talking about. I guess since I had my memory card in, it hasn't interrupted me with a, a prompt yet. Because when I was playing this before... Vice. That's a W there, buddy. You don't pronounce... Vice Engelbard? Yeah, that guy's great. He's a really cool guy. Ow. You guys are dicks, though. I don't like you. I'm just gonna shoot the little anime girl. Nope. Can't do it. They have bears around them. You can't shoot these this big blue Vulcan Raven looking guy. I say Vulcan Raven. Because he has a Vulcan in the cutscene. You can't shoot the anime girl or the big blue guy. Surprisingly, these two characters are the most subtle, like, designs in this game. They're the most subtle ones. We're gonna get some really ridiculous looking ones. This way. Spoilers. 
Weiss, or Vice, I guess, are the really ridiculous looking ones. Is one of the most ridiculous looking. Luck is on your side. Look at my weird elf ears. Okay. Bye. <laughs> he handles her like a fucking gorilla. So they're going for a color-coordinated group, huh? I like your scarf. It looks cool. But then again, I'm a fan of blue. But then again, I wear red. So that means I win, because I'm the hero. Vincent Valentine. Jameson Price. Are you alright? I have so many belts on me, Reeve. Nice to see you again. No. They couldn't possibly pierce through all these belts. And my gold <laughs> boots. But enough of the small talk. Who are those soldiers? Reeve looks pretty good. That suit looks pretty good. I like it. It's nice blue. He's got a nice little goatee going on. Who's the asshole in the beanie? Is that really proper military attire? Are the Svits? I don't know what that is. You want to explain that? Oh, he's a commissioner. Okay. The Svits. So that's what they're called. We'll discuss this Very later. hard to pronounce. WRO troops have arrived and commenced rescue operations. You could use your help, Vincent. No. I'm not Are going you? to. Hmm? I don't know what you're up to. But I want absolutely no part of it. So fuck you. But you fought alongside us three years ago. Well, to be fair, that was... Oh, God! No, Reeve! Oh. Reeve. Oh, no. My best friend, Reeve. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> so, meet Kate, sir. I was wearing a passing suit, don't you know? Ah, oh, someone put a bomb in my potato. <laughs> All right. What? <laughs> what do you want me to? Do? Vincent just takes this in stride, and the freaking Reeve doll just had like little swirly eyes. You know, I know Kate Sif is a character in this series, was a character in FF7, but really, because Kate Sif is the other important character in Dirge of Cerberus. Yeah. Okay. Like, hmm. Like, it's a little weird. Like, I guess he's kind of our Daxter. To, he's the Daxter to our Jack. You know, whenever Jack got really uh, gruff and aggressive. Do I still have my Limit Breaker? No, I don't. Limit Breaker is a one-time go. Alright, so now I think I just have to shoot a bunch of guys. Shoots a bunch of people. You do have ammo, so then... You do have ammo, so if you expend it too much, then you're going to be stuck with hand-to-hand -hand combat. And that's not... And similar to Vincent's stats in FF7, uh, close-hand... Close-range combat is not really his deal, unless he's in his limit break form. So, mind your ammo. Just, you know, just keep that, uh... Just keep that little number in your head. But I think we're not in any trouble of losing any... A lot of ammo that soon, because I think there's still a bunch of that in gill and potions. There we go. And we also have plenty of Mako. So I think we still need to go, I think we need to go to the church in order to initiate uh, Kate Sif's plan. Yeah, Kate Sif is this really weird cartoon Moogle ri riding cat thing. And I know he's like, Kate Sif is a monster in the series, and it's also... He's a main character in FF7, but really, wouldn't you want to pick someone a little bit more serious for Vincent to work off of? I need supplies. So you can buy rations from this guy. Now I'm... Oh, wait. Modify? Nope, nothing to modify. Alright. Information on the WRO. Uh, let's see. Yeah, from the intro, it seemed like Yuffie was going to be kind of like your foil. And I think to a degree she is, but... 
I'm pretty sure you get to play as Kate Sif later on in this game, and that's just... Like, the commercials for this game were really, like, anime and really intense, and, like, it had the Gak theme song playing in the background, and it had Vincent, like, going through this whole big epic anime brooding, e brooding uh, hero guy fighting against a bunch of weird, like, super soldiers and stuff. I don't know. For some reason, the talking cat thing doesn't seem... doesn't really... I don't really draw the line between the two. Except for the fact that they were in the same game. Hmm. But I guess you need kind of a comic relief character. Oh, cool! We got the Griffin. This is our machine gun. So let's go ahead and customize. We can go ahead and actually swap out weapons on the fly. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna put a long barrel, because this thing has tons of speed. Put a sniper scope. Put fire materia. Hang on. Whoop. There we go. Now I got my machine gun. I have a machine gun with a scope. Oh, shit. Take this, you fucking cockroaches. You wanna mess with the bad guy? Well, say goodnight to the bad guy. I think Vincent also gets a shotgun later on. And I think there's also a few hidden guns that you have to, uh... That you can find later on. And I think one of those is Ultima Weapon. But it's secret. It's hidden. I'm glad you're on our side, sir. So, you gotta put in the effort. Yeah, last time when I was doing this during my uh, test recording, I had the uh, short barrel attached to the machine gun. Because I was thinking like, oh, okay, if I make an even faster machine gun, then they'll never be able to stop me. Well then, you know. Let's see. Alright. When I played this originally, I think I went to the right. I mean, the left. Cerberus Relief. Let's go to the Cerberus and... Cerberus Relief. Slightly increases defense. Okay. So we'll leave the fire materia on the Griffin, and we'll have the Cerberus Relief in order to get our defense up. Cool. And I'm pretty sure you could probably buy that at the end of the stage if you didn't collect it. So now we need to find snipers. Good thing we had that sniper scope in our rifle, handgun. Let's see, where are they? A lot of clicking into the stick. I kind of like how... I'm kind of in agreement with Spoonie, to a degree, about his opinion on Final Fantasy. At least in terms of weapons. Because, you know, Vincent and Barrett are probably the only two sensible guys to bring in a firearm to a fight. Cloud's giant sword is also... While it's immensely cool and it has a story behind it, and also he just kind of threw it away the first second you got it, because you know you did. You know the second that you had a chance to get either the Mithril Sword or the fucking Hard Edge. You friggin' chucked that Buster Sword away. And never equipped it again. I know, because I did. Uh, yeah, Vincent and Barrett are the only ones sensible enough to bring in a firearm to a fight. Barrett literally just straps one onto his frickin', like, arm stub. Oh, and also the, F the Team Four Star Bridge version of FF7 is pretty good. That was another bit of how FF7 is really getting, uh, making a comeback in, as far as hype goes. I'm looking forward to the FF7 remake. Yeah, it's epi yeah, it's multi-part, but I don't think that's a bad thing. Oh, right, I put it on the other gun. There we go. Suck it. So the dragonfly is coming back, and somehow, even though it's in a shittier condition, it takes more damage. Okay. I don't know how that works, but alright. Who shoots missiles at a... <laughs> Who shoots missiles at a regular person? I mean, granted, Vincent's like a powerful vampire thing or whatever, but still. I want to target the... Oh, screw it. I'll just... There we go. You love it. One few more shots ought to do it. I don't think Vincent has a dodge roll. Oh, wait, yeah, he has a dodge dash. Which I have not been using properly. 
But I got potions. So we're good. Stop targeting on that. I don't know why it's targeting there, but alright. It's cool. Nothing bad is going on here. Alright, there we go. Just fire at it. With fire materia. Alright, cool. First boss is done. And I think that's the first stage, everybody. When I first played this and I didn't use my memory card, it just kept interrupting me like every five minutes. Like, do you want to save? Do you want to save? You sure you want to save? I mean, you probably should save. I'd save. Anyway. First stage! Let's see what Vincent does. It's gonna be something cool, I bet. I bet it's gonna be something cool. Oh, yeah! Oh, that's a cool moment. That's a cool little visual. Steve Bloom always has to voice some cool deep, like, uh, scratchy voice guy with a gun. Or he has to voice some guy who turns into a friggin' animal that just rips you apart with bear claws. I love you, Steve Bloom. You're so cool. And I love you too, Vincent. He's one red-suited man who's not gonna let you down. Really? The female soldiers weren't given pants? Okay. I guess that's just how Svitz ro rolls. Just shoot him a bunch! Good thing I have this claw guard. What are you doing, Reeve? Use Kate Sith! That's kind of why you have it, so you don't get put in the line of fire. I mean, I guess he's a good shot, but jeez. Okay, well. I guess I'm gonna go now. Yeah! Oh. Are we done, or is there more? Is there more? No, I think we're done. Pretty sure we're done. Pretty sure that's the first level. <laughs> Even whenever he sits, he has to make it like a big thing. Like his cape has to flow in the wind that might not even be there. <laughs> those are some pointy ass shoes. Good work. How do your feet fit in those? The enemy is retreating. It seems they have finally begun their withdrawal. I thought this was Junon because of the big cannon. Good. However, we still require your assistance. Shows you what I know about FF7. Reports are edge, is under edge as in the prince from FF4? I love that guy. He can handle himself. Well, I just blew up a helicopter. I guess I can do some more. Yeah. Oh, cool. Now we get our results screen. Let's see how I did. A, A, B, B, A, C, S. Oh, it was judging me for how many items I used. Well, I got an A. Okay, that's that's fair. I missed four civilians. I got the girl saved, and I got the key cards, except one. And I didn't assist that many members. I assisted eight out of 12. All right. So I think this is where, my where Vincent will level up. Now... Again, if I wanted to do it the bitch way, which I don't think I even need to, I could have used the action replay and got up to max levels at the end. But I don't think at the end of the day, that doesn't really do much except for your... I think that just works toward the final level. I think all that works just toward the final level of the game. Or it's just for your limit breaker. Either way, it's not that big a difference. I think you might have more help to work with, but besides that, I think we're good. Okay. Whoa. Okay, so we're so the WRO is just fucked, right? Because it just has this. Oh Jesus, Ansem is attacking. Ansem's attacking us with the darkness. Like, how much of a bullshit weapon is that? Like, how do you fight that? You can't shoot that. You and your little berets. 
Seriously, did the female officers just not get pants? They're only given boy shorts? I mean, I guess it's better than Svitz when they just have, like, leotards. Or unitards. Oh. Oh. Rosso. Ooh, she has a fancy Russian accent. Svets. Eh. I mean, that's that. That makes sense. That's cool. Oh. No decapitation, but okay. I don't know what that means. She has a giant sword, dual-edged halberd. Claymore thing. Hmm. I wonder who's gonna end up fighting her. Showdown in the wastes. Breathe. Alright, so we're gonna let this cutscene play out and then I think we'll pick this up in the next episode. Deep ground. Deep ground. They're deep in the ground. Okay, so I was I was kinda wrong. They are a part of the Shinra. Or they're at least related to it. So much for me being sure about that. That's strong. That's strong. Morality kind of is, you know, a big crutch with soldiers. That's why in Soldier they take out your morality. <laughs> Shit is bad. Look, dude, I use a tiny Scottish cat thing. No, what do you want from me? Other than the president himself, the only people who knew of Deep Ground's existence were most likely Heidegger, Scott. You know, those two evil corrupt motherfuckers from the first game. And you know, that really, really evil asshole. I don't think Rufus really cared. Because you were the one cool guy with them, Reeve. The one cool guy who actually gave a shit about the about sec about Sector Seven. I think getting crushed. Vincent, have you heard of the mass disappearance that occurred recently in Juno? Hmm. I remember the report saying that twenty or thirty people suddenly vanished. Where does Vincent go whenever he takes a break? Just back into a coffin or something? How do you get information from a coffin? They wouldn't be able to contain the inevitable panic. The actual number of people that went missing that day was 1,200. Jeez. 1,200 people simply vanished without a single... And then 1,200 Svets started showing up. Weird, huh? Investigation. But we came up empty-handed. Except for the rumors. Since the Junon disappearances, people in Edge have been... <laughs> Couldn't have found a better word for that there, Reeve. Master wordsmith, Reeve is. Let me ask you, does the wind sound like a thousand wailing songs? Reeve is waxing poetic here. You're trying to out you're trying to out like angst the angstiest guy next to Cloud. You're gonna need to do a little bit better than that, Reeve. So we just have a bunch of British and Scottish guys on our team, or what? At last. The time has come. <laughs> Meet our main antagonist, Vice. Who has the stupidest hair ever. I am including Cloud in that sentence. Vince is like, this is stupid. Stabbed and crushed, garroted and impaled, shot and executed without mercy. I'm sorry, you can't sound intimidating when you have that big, stupid, like, pointy afro thing. Look at that shit! Look at it! Look how stupid it is! I'm not. 
<laughs> Look how big and stupid his hair is. That's goofy even in anime terms. Where could that signal have What was that? I think we're getting attacked, Reef. By the big stupid anime hair guy. Oh shit! Oh shit, red thirteen. It's cool, I got this. How can they outrun a whoa? I got him. I'll take care of your pet problem. Just keep driving. I'll shoot him in the face. Use this, Use this minigun, Vincent. Oh snap. <laughs> For some reason it doesn't the, the imagery doesn't work here. Alright. So for the next episode, we'll just shoot guard hounds in the face with a giant machine gun. With a giant minigun. So until then, thank you so much for watching, and Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year to all of you. From everyone here at Crash Star Gaming. Until next time, thank you.